This, my friends, is a good old Alvarez hard shell case. And uh, I think this sells for about $79, and you can probably get it shipped to your house under 100 uh, And everybody wants one of these with the guitars, and when I have them to spare, I do give them away with the guitars. I don't upcharge for cases. I tend to give away all accessories that I get. Um, so if I have a hard shell case to spare, it goes with a really good guitar. I only put them with, with the, the better quality guitars. But for all the cheaper guitars, I always supply a gig bag. And I buy bulk Chromecast gig bags. Right now I have a source where I can buy them for about $7 a piece. And I add them to every single guitar that I say, sell. Why? Because it's the first question that comes out everybody's mouth. Is there a case? with a guitar? Is there a gig bag with a guitar? And there's something psychological about listing a guitar that has a case, that has a gig bag, that has some means of carrying it out of here and home, or something to ship it in, um, that often cements a sale. Whereas if you don't have one, uh, it causes hesitation on the part of the buyer. So I made a conscious decision a long time ago to keep a stock of these gig bags and it is a pain because uh, like the um, lesser branded guitars, these gig bags appear and disappear all the time. So I've gone through various brands and they've cost me as much as $10, $12 a piece. Uh, but right now I have uh, a basic nylon gig bag, no, no padding, but a good nylon bag with, with uh, good, good zippers and everything, uh, or zips if you're English, um, to put with every guitar and it's just something and a lot of times people will, will say well I'll upgrade this later I'll find a better case for it uh, which is fine it, they have something to start with um, and I occasionally get these hard shell cases sometimes I keep them for my guitars but right now everything's got a case so we're fine so for instance this one here which is a nice hard shell new Alvarez will probably go with one of the uh, higher end guitars uh, that I currently have in my, um, uh, what do you call it, inventory. <laughs> so, uh, but what do, what do you do about cases? Um, do you seek out hard shell cases for everything? Are you okay with gig bags? I find that there's a lot of overlap. I, I think this is a really nice hard shell case, really well made. It's made, made for Alvarez, I should say. Uh, it's got nice clasps on it. It's nicely stitched. It's black. Uh, it's a good quality hard shell case, but they're not all like this. Uh, I run across you know, marginal hard shell cases or, or chipboard cases, we call them. And I just give those away with, with, with guitars um, because they're appreciated as better than nothing. Uh, and also, uh, there are gig bags that are actually better than some of those cheap hard shell cases. I've right now got my Guild 12 string in a nice, really well padded um, original guild gig bag because I don't have a hard shell to fit that jumbo shape and also the elongated uh, neck with the 12 string headstock. So I just kept the original gig bag because it suffices uh, just well. Uh, also with my Godan Exit 22 I have the original Godan gig bag which is a tank. It's uh, uh, really well padded. It's got the neck brace and tie in it so you can brace the neck uh, leather handles. It's a really good quality padded electric guitar gig bag. So I never bothered to switch that out with a with a hard shell case. Um, same with electric guitars. I keep a little stock of cheap electric guitar gig bags whenever I sell an electric guitar. Sometimes I will include a hard shell case uh, if I have one to spare. But again, if I ship that out or somebody comes to buy it, I want to have a supply of, you know, reasonable gig bags to be able to give away with the guitar. I give away picks, I give away capo, capos, I give away um, straps. A lot, a lot of times I buy guitars. Sometimes when I buy used guitars to fix up, they come with um, somebody's strap. And if it's in reasonable condition, I just, I keep a collection of them in my living room and I just throw them in with the guitars. I give away also tuners. I'm always getting little digital tuners, little clip-on tuners. Um, sometimes they're rather antiquated, sometimes they're brand new in the box. Uh, I give them away. Uh, hundreds of them I've given away in the past. I don't keep any for myself. Um, 
I think I might have one somewhere, but uh, I tend to tune to my piano so or, or by ear, so I, I don't really use electric tuners. You can always use your phone if you have to. So uh, I give away all accoutrements. I, the only thing that I tend to keep, if I buy a guitar and it comes in one of those packs with all the accessories, uh, I throw in the accessories in the sale and give them to the person that buys it. I might grab the extra pack of strings because I always need strings. I've got guitars um, that I, I buy bulk Daddario strings for, uh, the, the nice guitars. But when I've got like cheap student guitars that just need a set of strings on them, uh, sometimes the free strings that come with uh, guitar packs, even though they're, they're not high, well branded, they suffice to put on the guitar and sell um, and get those rusty or, or nasty strings off there. And then I don't have to, to spend an extra $10, uh, which is going to drive up the price of a $100 guitar. Uh, so it works just well. So that's the one thing I tend to keep. I put picks in a jar and everyone who comes over, I ask them if they want picks and they get to pick two or three uh, picks out. Uh, I'm running ro low right now because everybody does. Uh, and, you know, I have all brands and, and stuff. So that's how I deal with uh, the accessories and accoutrements. Uh, and, you know, that's my philosophy regarding cases. Uh, I like to give something and I like to ship the guitar in something, even a non padded basic nylon cover bag uh, provides some shipping uh, bolstering and helps. Uh, so when I ship a guitar, I put it in, in one of those sheet wraps, you know, those sort of white sheet wraps that you, I keep all those. And I wrap it in one of those and tape it up. And then I put inside uh, some kind of uh, nylon gig bag. And then I brace it around the sides of it in whatever box I'm shipping it with. And I get very, very few shipping issues at all. And considering the number of guitars and ukuleles I ship, it's quite remarkable that I only get shipping damage maybe once every two or three years, uh, if that. So um, it's a good practice. I'm sticking to it. I learned by the hard way uh, and just sort of learn from mistakes. And that's how I deal with things now. Uh, and, you know, some people really want a hard shell case. They're really convinced that, that a hard shell case is absolutely gospel for everything that they own. Uh, and they really um, are not happy with gig bags, even padded ones. And then there are some people that actually prefer the gig bags if it's a nicely padded one because it's more portable, it takes up less space. Uh, I think if you go on an airplane and you want to put the guitar in the luggage bin or see if the stewardess will put it in the front closet, which I've had happen, uh, a lot of times they'll do it with a gig bag, but if you show up with a guitar in one of these, they might not. They might try and make you check it in. And these, although they're good, Hard shell cases are not sufficient for air airport luggage at all, not even close. They make, um, you know, air transport cases for guitars, and they are very, very expensive, probably beginning around two or three hundred and, and up. And they're specially made with bracing, uh, a particular metal alloy that can't be crushed, and they have much more bracing uh, on the inside and probably some sort of neck cradle. Uh, that's the only thing you should put in a check into your luggage if you're checking in your guitar. You should never check it into one of these because it will probably get damaged or crushed on the way. And I've, I've actually had to repair guitars uh, that were damaged by that method. But anyway, this is just a video about uh, mostly cases but guitar accessories, what I do, what my practices are. I save everything. Everything that comes with guitars, guitar stands I give away. I've got a pile of them. They're new. They sometimes come with guitar packages. Uh, I give. Them, somebody asked me for a stand. I, I said I got one in the, in the in the garage, and I go and, and give it to them. And often that just cements the sale. Uh, they're thrilled. And of course, I give away as many cases as I can. But if I don't have a hard shell case to give away, I make sure that I have a gig bag. And it is a commitment, and it it, it does cost extra money. I buy. I currently buy the uh, gig bags that I get which are the Chromecast gig, gig bags. I found an eBay source for something around $7 a piece, and I buy 10 at a time. So that's a $70 commitment. Um, or sometimes I buy even more, just so that I have them all, all on hand. The problem with those, uh, however, is that they are designed to fit a dreadnought. So they're a little big, 
on a concert or auditorium or double O or triple O guitar. Actually, a, a triple O guitar would actually absolutely swim in it. Um, and classical guitars are a little bit small in there too. But I just can't find the same source for smaller guitars. I, they do make a smaller one, but it doesn't fit a, small, a smaller acoustic. It fix, fits an electric and a junior uh, uh, acoustics. So the whole gig bag, bag business is a, a kind of a pain. And I'm constantly shifting between models and trying stuff out. Um, but the, you know, my absolute um, policy is to provide a gig bag with everything I sell, with a few exceptions. I mean, there are some crazy shaped guitars or uh, other stringed instruments that I just cannot find bags for, or the only bags available are, you know, as expensive as the guitar and just not um, feasible. So uh, very rarely do I let something go out of the house without some sort of bag of cover or ship anything out without a bag of cover. Uh, and not every seller does that. In fact, most sellers don't uh, give a bag away. Um, and a lot do. And I'm wondering, the ones that do probably get a lot more sales. And the ones that don't need to, need to clue in. Uh, because if it only costs you a few more dollars to put a nylon bag on something, it seems to me that if it's going to drive sales, that that's what you should do. But anyway, that's my whole philosophy on it. I don't want to take it past 12 minutes. Uh, let me know what you do or what your preference is on all that stuff. I always look forward to your feedback. All right, see you next time.